So one of the things that we love to do is, uh, you know, cook our Asian food. And as time has gone on, I think our local culture has, has sort of adopted dishes and made them their own. And this is one of those dishes. We're gonna be making sweet sour spare ribs and it's gonna have a lot of cool ingredients in here. But really the dish derives from the Chinese heritage. And over the course of time, you know, with all of the different melting pot cuisines, and just, you know, how region, regionally things change, the dish sort of has evolved on its own. And, and what we're gonna do is make that local style Chinese uh, sweet sour spare ribs. And basically, the, the recipe it has, you know, Chinese fermented black beans, it's got some sugar, it's got pineapple, um, soy sauce, ginger, and, and garlic. And we're starting with pork spare ribs. And what I'm doing is I'm browning them. So we started with, I have raw diced, um, spare rib pieces that I got from our, our meat department. And then we have, we have flour, and all I'm doing is I'm lightly dredging the pieces of meat in the flour. What's really important here is we're, we're browning the meat, but I'm not, I'm not trying to create a, a batter or a crust. I'm just lightly flouring them to sort of help dry them out, and then we're gonna put them in medium-high heat to brown. So remember, you're not trying to create a crust, you're just trying to dry them out so they don't splatter and, and then and they can actually brown. If you have too much water on these things, they're not gonna brown. So I've got, we've started already here and I've got a nice big pan. We're gonna do about three pounds of them. And once I get all of this browned, then we'll come back and we'll go ahead and put together the, all of the other ingredients to make this braise. So let me finish this up and then we'll be right back. All right, we've got all of our uh, meats browned and now we're gonna go ahead and start making the sauce. I have the pot that I use to brown all the, uh, the meat in, and what's really important is I'm, I'm saving the pot because all the little brown pieces of uh, caramelization are still in here, and I wanna make sure that goes into the dish because that's flavor, and I don't wanna lose all that flavor. So we're gonna keep that there. I've got some stuff here. I've got a piece of ginger, and I'm gonna cut it into pieces here. Now you can cut this really fine if you want, or you can leave whole larger pieces and just kinda smash them. And then when you, when you serve it, people, they're big enough so people will notice them and then they'll take them out. If you want to mince them very fine, then it just stays in the dish. That's up to you. Um, but most locals will just take pieces, cut big pieces, and then just smash them and put them in. So I'm going to throw that in here. I'm going to put my, I have some ginger that I'm going to throw in here as well. And then, oh, it smells really good. Okay, now we're going to take the meat. We're going to put the meat back in the pan. Now remember the browning, the, we brown these pieces of meat because that's gonna add flavor, okay? And when you're browning the meat in the first stages, you really wanna make sure you get this brown color because if it's, if it's white, you're not gonna have the rich depth of flavor that you're really looking for in this dish. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna add the, the, uh, the liquids in here. Now this is, the, the cooking method that we're doing here is braise. And what that means is we're going to take small pieces of typically a, a less tender cut of meat. We're going to brown it. We're going to submerge it in liquid. And we're going to slowly cook it until it's tender. Okay, now I have some vinegar that's going to go in here. This is shoyu. I have a little bit of salt. This is brown sugar. And I will put a little bit more. And then I have uh, Chinese black beans. These are fermented black beans. Now, I'm gonna use them whole. If you want, you can chop them up. You just gotta be careful. If you're gonna chop them up, uh, they can be salty, so you might wanna rinse them before you use them. Now, we're gonna let all of this come together. We're gonna let the liquids come down. We're gonna uh, let the sugars melt. And then we're gonna bring this up to a boil, and then we're gonna lightly simmer this until I take a fork and I push into one of the pieces of pork and it's very tender. Once that's done, we'll come back and we'll add the pineapples and we'll add the daikon. So stay tuned. Okay, so uh, we've, it's been braising and it's really nice that the, the, the flavors are coming out, the juices are coming out of the chicken, all the flavors are marrying, it smells awesome. You got that vinegar, the soy sauce, you got the ginger in there. So now, wh what I'm gonna do now is while this is working, I'm gonna go ahead and add some pineapple 
the juice and all. Go ahead and add the whole thing. And then this is a this is a daikon, so it's a uh, it's an a radish, uh, Asian radish. I'm gonna go ahead and cut some cut some of it, and we're gonna put that in as well. And we're gonna add this. We just we just want to put it in so that it kind of flavors and it gets tender. And once that's done, we'll come back and we're just gonna go ahead and thicken it with a little bit of slurry and then it'll be ready to eat. So I'm gonna just finish cutting this up real quick. And then we're gonna put this in. I'm gonna stir it up real fast and we're just gonna let it cook for a few more minutes to allow the daikong to, to soften up and let the flavor start to come out. And then um, we'll thicken it up and then it'll be time to taste. So we'll be right back. All right, so we've got, uh, we've got our, we browned our pork, we added all our ingredients, we brought it up to a simmer, we let all the flavors come together, got a fork tender, and then we added, uh, we added the pineapple, the juice from the pineapple, we added daikon to this. We've let it all kind of marry together. It smells awesome. You can smell the ginger, the garlic, the sweet, the savory, it's all come together. And now I wanna thicken it just a little bit so I have a nice sauce. And I have a slurry here and this is cornstarch and water. And what I did was I brought this back up. You want to bring it to a boil when you add a slurry because the slurry fully thickens once it's boiling. So I got it up to a boil. I'm just going to add a little bit on the edge here because I want to give it some body. It's going to give it some body and some shine. And again, you're going to add what works for you because it's sort of a, you know, the recipe is a guideline, right? So you need to take the recipe, look at it, and then make your judgment calls about what you think looks best for the dish when you make it. And I like, I like body in my sauce, but I don't like my sauce to be like clumpy thick. But I'm gonna add just a little bit more. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the part that, the part that I live for, which is taste, okay? So I got this in here. It's thickening up nicely. The pieces are all nice and tender. And I have uh, the Hawaii staple here. I got my rice. I wanna put some, uh, Couple pieces on here. It looks super good. It's super tender, and just smells awesome. The, the black beans, ginger, garlic. Okay, got some on the rice here. Then we got to put some of that sauce. Look at that. Ooh. Okay. Look at that. I'll put a little more because I love that sauce. Got to get some pineapple, and then we got daikon. So. Here's our wonderful spare ribs dish. Super good. Now remember, the secret to making it not only super good, but super, super, super good is make it the day before, let it sit at night. The flavors even come together the more, reheat it the next day, and then you're good to go. I guess the last thing to say is for more recipes like this, visit us at foodland.com. See ya. Mm. Mm.